Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. Today I wanted to discuss flint and steel ignition. And for me, this has to be one of the most important methods of achieving fire that one can understand. And the reason I say that is because it's a process that with a little training and a little skill development, you can own from A to Z. It's not that difficult to source an improvised flint and steel set off of the landscape or with materials that are widely available. What I mean by that is, let's say an old high carbon steel file. You can take a file and simply snap it off, be it stick it in a vise and break it, put it between two hard rocks and snap that thing off. Now all you have to do is file one side of that file off, get the file markings off, which is not 100% necessary, it just makes it work better. And now you can improvise a rock off the landscape, be it a piece of quartz, chert, or flint, whatever you have available in your area. And now you can strike that piece of broken file and easily create uh, a fire steel and throw sparks and be able to use that for ignition. One step even easier than that is if you carry a high carbon steel knife on your belt, you already have a fire steel with you if you need it. Of course, personally, I like using a fire steel if I have it in my kit, and then that way I preserve that resource of the spine of my knife. But in a worst case scenario with nothing else, if I can find a rock and I have char, I can use my knife to improvise that fire steel. So it's not all that unheard of to be able to come up with something to use for a fire steel, be it your knife, an old file, a piece of high carbon steel that you improvise from wherever. With a fire steel, you have one fire steel. If you can keep up with it and never lose it, you can strike fires off that for a lifetime because you are using such a minute material each time you strike it. Whereas in my opinion, with a ferro rod, you're using significant material each time you scrape it. So again, a ferro rod, such as a half inch by six inch, might last you few years if you use it regularly, whereas the fire steel striker you can use for a lifetime as long as you don't lose it. As far as rocks go to strike with your fire steel, you can always come up with something off the landscape. In my area we have a ton of quartz and quartz works great throwing sparks off of a fire steel. The only downside to it is it dulls out fast, but we have so much of it in my area when it dulls out I just throw it down, pick up another piece, and I'm good to go. If you're fortunate enough to have chert or even flint in your area, then you have a perfect resource that you can use for a lifetime striking that fire steel. Especially if a piece gets dull, you can always sharpen it up if you know how to do that. But if you have a lot of it around, just pick up another piece and keep on trucking. And then the next step in that equation is having some type of a charred material to be able to accept the spark off your fire steel. And there's a lot of different things that you can use for that, such as punk wood, which would be the number one resource I would think in most woodland environments because punk wood is basically everywhere. It's just partially rotten wood, put it in a tin or at least uh, starve it of oxygen and then burn it. Once it's charred or carbonized, now it will accept the spark off that fire steel. You insert that into a bird's nest and you're able to blow that into flame. Other materials that are available are things such as uh, cattail. You can char cattail, mullein leaves, inner pits from different types of plants. So there's a lot of different materials and you can do research on that and come up with a lot of different things. I even have a video here where I talked about natural char. Also, a lot of people utilize charring cotton cloth. And if you carry a bandana or a spare t-shirt or some type of item like that, then that's a temporary solution to creating char. Once you achieve your fire, then you insert some type of a material, be it natural or in the case of what I have in this tin, is just some inch squares of cotton cloth, which I would plan to char. Once I create that initial fire, now I'm gonna use my tin or whatever I'm using to now create more char. And that's what we call next fire mentality. Now that I've gotten my first fire, what can I do to make sure that I can affect that second fire? And there are some limited natural materials that will accept a spark without even charring them, such as chaga which we don't have chaga in my area, so it's not a big resource for me, even though I have some in my kit that was given to me by Joshua Ingert uh, recently from the Gray Bearded Green Beret. Uh, he's like a wizard with the flint and steel. I was kind of picking his brain recently at a class that we were doing, and uh, he walked out into the field and he pulled out the seed pod off of a milkweed, and he broke out that pod and got the inner ovum out of that pod. And he simply broke it in half and said, here, use this with your flint and steel. And with no charring, I was able to get an ember with that inner um, ovum seed pod. And I was really amazed at that and also did the same thing with the chaga. So it was nice to know that there are natural materials that can be used for this without charring. But for me, 
it just seems easy to char because there's not as many materials in my area. Neither chaga nor that milkweed stuff is available. So for me, it just seems important to carry charred material that I can use to affect my fire when I need to, and then just resupply that charred material with each fire that I make so that I always have it for that next fire. So with all that said, we can see that flint and steel is one of those ignition sources that you can really own from beginning to end. The steel, the stone, the char, uh, the tinder bundle that you use to ignite the flame. All of those things can be sourced relatively easy off the landscape. All right, so I wanted to show you while I was talking about this, a couple of methods of flint and steel ignition that I personally use. This is nothing new. These are things that you can see on other videos, but I just wanted to share my techniques and hopefully it will help somebody who may be just getting started with flint and steel. Now what I wanna demonstrate for you is a couple of ways that I use a flint and steel kit. So what I have here is a nice flat piece of flint and I have my charred cotton lamp wick. What you wanna do is lay your charred cloth or charred material in this case, right to the edge of your stone. And I hope you can see that. I don't have it so close that my striker is gonna hit the charred material and break it off, but it's right there on the edge so that when sparks are thrown, it will bounce up onto that charred material and catch. So sometimes one strike is enough and sometimes it takes several strikes. We'll see how I do right now at this awkward angle on the camera. So all I'm gonna do is glance my fire steel lightly across this sharp edge and hopefully we'll get sparks. And there we go. I only caught one side of that, so I give it just a second to kind of spread out across the lamp wick. Now that I have that glowing nice and hot, I can now simply insert this into a tinder bundle and use that in conjunction together to make flame. Now it's very easy to break this charred end off of this lamp wick, especially when it's rattling around in your char tin. So to protect that charred edge, which is very important, I roll this up just like this and stick it back in my tin and it helps protect that charred edge and prevent it from getting knocked off, therefore making that wick less usable. And the second method that I use with my flint and steel kit is to simply open up my tin of charred material like this. And now I'm gonna hold my fire steel right over top of that material. I try to hold it close, but if you hold it too close, when you strike your rock, you'll end up hitting and spilling your material, which is something you absolutely don't wanna do. So I hold the steel up just a little bit higher, and now I'm gonna use the rock this time to hit the steel. Whereas before I was using the steel to strike against the rock, now I'm gonna hit the rock against the steel. And then from there, I'll be able to throw, hopefully you can see, I have a little ember in there. I actually have a couple at this point. So I'm just gonna fish that little guy out of there. And if I feel that that's too small by itself to achieve ignition, what I can do is simply put another piece with it and use this one as the pilot to create a second. So you can use whatever material that you think is important to get your fire started. And now I'm just gonna taco that thing down in my tinder bundle give it a little oxygen and with that I can easily blow this into flame you can see that heavy smoke starting to come out and there we have flame so very easy to achieve fire with that flint and steel kit. I'm gonna go ahead and close this box back off just in case anything else is smoldering in there and that'll ensure that my char doesn't burn up and I'll still have plenty in this tin for the next fire. So I wanted to go over these two techniques just a little more clearly for those of you who may not have a lot of experience with flint and steel or maybe you're just starting out with it. The first method is I'm right-handed so I have my fire steel in my right hand and with my left I have my piece of flint. This is the method I would use if I were putting char cloth on top of my stone and now I'll strike that with the steel throwing sparks on top of the stone which will land on my charred material and create my ember. 
one of the main mistakes that I see people made with this is they hammer against a stone. And this flint or chert quartz is all very brittle. And if you hit it hard, it's going to just chip off. Now you're going to have a dulled edge, which won't work nearly as well or won't work at all. So you want to make sure that you're just glancing your steel against that and getting the most amount of sparks while preserving your resource. I want you to watch the angle of my motion. There's a lot of wrist involved in this. And if you do it correctly, you barely graze that stone. That's the key thing. So you can see I'm just barely hitting that thing, just barely grazing that steel and therefore throwing those sparks up there. So that's the key thing is to get used to this almost like a C-shaped motion as you're coming down, making better contact with your striker. And that light contact will throw nice sparks but not dole out your stone nearly as fast as just hammering against it. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is I'm going to switch places. So my fire steel will go from my dominant hand to my off hand and now I'm going to use the rock to strike against the fire steel. And again, I use that same wrist motion, almost like a C-shaped motion, just to glance sparks down. The hard part about this is a lot of people have a hard time hold, you know, holding this steel while they're moving this. So you have to get used to that. My goal is not to move this at all, but then to drive sparks down in my char. And that's the difficult part is a lot of people, when they first start this, they end up hitting their char tin, get aggravated spill and everything. So you have to have good control throwing those sparks down holding that steel very steady, but not over penetrating with the stone. Hopefully you can see that technique. And that's where that C shape works well, because instead of driving straight down, you're curving out and therefore missing the, the tender or missing the tin that's down below this. So C shape, maybe that's a hint from a C shape striker, which we think of as being like the traditional fire steel. That C shape wrist motion will help you so much. Again, graze the stone, don't hammer the stone and you'll preserve this resource and be able to use it for a lot longer. So I wanted to thank you guys for taking the time to tune in for this long-winded discussion on flint and steel ignition. I hope that I threw out a tip or two that maybe was helpful for you, especially if you're just getting started with this. And if you go back to the very beginnings of the Black Hat Bushcraft channel, the very first video I uploaded here was a simple demonstration on flint and steel fire. And while I've touched on it in some other videos along the way, I've never really gone in detail and explained the process like I did today. So I did want to take the time to do that to benefit those who maybe could use this information. I appreciate your time and interest. I hope you'll go and visit blackhatbushcraft.com and I'll definitely be back with another video just as soon as possible. And until the next one, take care and God bless. And once again, I've gone and filmed another video without a black hat. Ugh.